Hello everyone, welcome to our latest TTT episode. In this video, we'll be talking about feature flags, an important concept of DevOps. We'll introduce feature flags in an example before discussing how to build feature flags and how they can be used. So let's begin. This is Sarah. Sarah is a DevOps engineer. She has set up a comprehensive CI-CD pipeline as part of the software deployment process for the product she's building. One day, a software update caused some critical issues in the product's UX. Therefore, Sarah decided to build something new into her code, a way to quickly and gracefully disable new features that were a part of any future software updates and to preserve the UX for her customers. First, Sarah reviewed her pipeline and realized that there were some process-related issues she had overlooked. Her team had built feature one, which had gone through the pipeline but had had to stop before being deployed to production. This was because of the gate, which represented the host of issues that could prevent the feature from being deployed. These issues included incomplete testing, business considerations, faulty code, and more. So her team had paused there and had gone back to developing feature two. At the same time, Others in the organization were dependent on feature one, which had not yet come through to production. In this fast world of continuous releases and feature delivery, this delay became problematic. Sarah knew that she had other ways around the problem. She could build off of a feature branch, move the necessary code through the pipeline on a side patch, or deploy a separate revision directly to production while skipping the dev environment. However, these were not very elegant fixes, and they required quite a bit of coordination with others. Since this was a pipeline and a microservice, Sarah knew that the problem could be compounded from there. Therefore, she decided to build a solution using feature flags. So what are feature flags? Feature flags, also called feature toggles, feature switches, feature flippers, or conditional features, are a software development technique that allows you to hide, enable, or disable selected features in production. This is done without deploying new code and is especially useful as part of the CI-CD pipeline. Feature flags account for a DevOps-first mindset so that you can progressively release even before features are complete and approved to be released to production. Because you can make changes without pushing additional code into production, it allows for faster and more controlled experimentation over the feature lifecycle. Feature flags are considered a best practice of DevOps. CI-CD pipelines can deploy code multiple times a day, and these pipelines are used to release software to end users faster. However, fast does not always mean bug-free or safe. Feature flags are one of the safety measures you can use to turn off a feature that does not perform well in production. Within the context of CD, feature flags are the foundation for releasing software faster and with a high degree of control. So how do you build feature flags? A feature flag in your code is essentially an if statement. The code inside these conditional statements can be toggled on or off, which is similar to the code being commented out. This is an example of the code of a feature flag. Sometimes, you may want to enable or disable a feature dynamically, such as during a simulation engine's integration tests. To do this, you can use a toggle router. This is a function that can be used to dynamically control which code path is live or enabled. You can create a toggle router in many ways, from an in-memory store to a sophisticated distributed system, but the core concept is that it will allow you to run automated tests to verify both sides of a toggled feature. This is an example of the code that can do this. So how do feature flags lay the foundation of true continuous deployment? To build a solution to her process problem, Sarah built a feature as a code branch and added a flag to it. As we've seen, the feature flag is essentially conditional logic. After adding the feature flag, you can merge it back into the master branch and follow the rest of your pipeline. This time, however, you can immediately deploy your code to production. This is because you have now introduced what's called a feature decision provider. This is an abstraction that sits outside the pipeline. 
It provides the ability to turn features on and off after deploying the code to production. This means that you can deploy code immediately without waiting for all tests to be run and business decisions to be taken. You can turn the given feature on or off whenever technical or business considerations demand. Theros Pipeline now looked like what you see on your screen. By making these modifications, Sarah was able to keep feature flags as a kill switch for any future software releases. One important thing to remember is that feature flags allow you to decouple feature rollout from code deployment. This means that code deployment does not equal release. The separation of code deployment and release gives you control over who sees what and when. As an example, consider your favorite video streaming service. This video streaming service likely has different tiers of content or privileges unlocked for different payment tiers. For example, let's say that someone with a basic plan can log in and watch SD videos on two different devices, whereas someone with a premium plan can do so on four different devices. Now imagine that this video streaming service is testing the rollout of a diamond plan which allows paying customers to log in and watch videos on six different devices, all in HD. From a backend perspective, to test whether the infrastructure can take the load, if all videos buffer smoothly with no interruptions or any other UX issues, it may be best to test the diamond plan with a limited number of users. You can use feature flags to do this. Feature flags will allow you to turn on diamond membership privileges for a selected number of users, while other users will have continuous and uninterrupted access to their own plans with no disruptions. This is also called a canary release, wherein a feature is turned on for a specific cohort of users. Key metrics, such as engagement rate and user satisfaction scores, are monitored to confirm that the new features do not negatively affect end users. Feature flags are also used for A-B testing. By disabling a feature for half of users and enabling it for the other half, you can test how well the feature performs for certain predetermined metrics. This is especially useful for non-technical people since they can test various features without having to deploy code. Finally, and most importantly, feature flags are a handy kill switch. If a bug is found post-release, the feature can be rolled back instantly without needing to compromise on the other parts of the code. So, we have seen what feature flags are, a simple way of using them, and some of their applications. We help new age companies and established enterprises to continuously, fearlessly deploy by implementing feature flags. If you want to deploy feature flags as part of your application, but are unsure where to start, contact us at info at QLogic.com. Our experts can give you valuable, customized guidance and implement a comprehensive DevOps-enabled feature flag strategy. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such tech updates and know-hows. If you found our explanation of feature flags useful, please comment, like, or share our video. That's it for this TTT episode. See you next time.